And I just want to remind you that although you find under week 13 material for our last text on the automobile, which is a wonderful young adult novella called The Motor Maids Across the Continent, documenting the fictional adventures of a group of young women from a high school in West Haven going from Chicago to California. That will actually be the topic of my lectures next week after the Thanksgiving <coughs> break. And today, my plan is to conclude the viewing of the movie Le Mans after an introduction concerning the themes of the film. Quick review of the calendar, just to keep essential dates on your mind. Oral presentations can be scheduled right now, anytime you're ready to reserve your slot. And the actual presentations uh, start on Monday, December 4th. And during that week, there will be no lectures because I'll be meeting on Zoom with the students. They will continue through the week after that, up until the 14th. And the 14th is also the deadline for the completion of the final project, which is posted in the Google Docs file. Just keep in mind that the, compared to the various weekly assignments, this time the file will be closed uh, the day after, after midnight of the 14th and you'll be able to view the file because there you will find the final grades, including the grade for the final exam. You'll be able to add comments past this deadline, but you won't be able to change the text or add any text unless you request it and we're granted an extension. And finally, we have our final exam very late. It's a very Christmassy kind of date, Tuesday, December 19th. The location has to be confirmed, but with all probability will be in this very room. And that's the time slot from 11.15 a.m. to 1.45 p.m., but the exam only requires two hours. So this is the final section on the special page about the film Le Mans. If you remember, it was produced and uh, also acted as the lead actor by Steve McQueen, who uh, did extensive preparations for this film, including registering a race car with three cameras on top that did several hours in the 1970 24-hour of Le Mans. And after the race, Steve McQueen and his crew spent the next few months filming on location at the racetrack with authentic cars borrowed by the Porsche uh, factory and also from various privateers, various private teams, with the participation of professional drivers as well, until he ran out of money, had to give up on his rights to the film in exchange for money and equipment to complete the film. The film came out. It was not a big success, especially compared to uh, what his previous movies had made between 1966 and 1970 movies with uh, Steve McQueen. I particularly recommend in reference to the themes of the visual representation of the cars is 1968 film Bullet, uh, which is about a San Francisco detective and includes one of the most famous car chases uh, in the history of cinema, which is about 10 minutes through the streets of San Francisco. And the commonality, the common thread in terms of the visual style between that car chase and this film is that the car chase for about 10 minutes happens with practically no lines. It's just cars 
the cop's car and a car with two criminals chasing each other, uh, hiding from each other, running from each other through the streets of San Francisco until the uh, car of the bad guys is pushed off the road, hits a gas station, bursts into flames, and therefore the cops has escaped. Any attempt by those criminals to eliminate him, but has nothing because he cannot arrest or interrogate the criminals and tie them to the current investigation. So what are the themes of the film Le Mans, which tells you the story of the 24-hour race that takes place every year in June and the individual stories of a few of the drivers, including Michael Delaney, played by Steve McQueen, plus other external characters, including especially Lisa, uh, a woman who lost her husband the previous year in an accident in which Michael Delaney, Steve McQueen, was involved. It's about the representation of racing, and keep in mind that the style of the film is such that it's a visual representation, not a narrative representation. Everything is, the contents are carried through the images more than the lines. The script is very sparse, very short. Racing as an existential, existential condition, not for everyone, of course, but for those special individuals who are the race car drivers. Keep in mind that the race car drivers still had a peculiar, enjoyed a peculiar consideration in society during that time. For one thing, as I mentioned several times, through the 1960s and 70s, every year you would have set not one, but several Formula One, Formula Two, or endurance race car drivers die sometimes in horrific accidents. Right? So they're a kind of modern hero. However, in this film, this film has a different approach uh, compared to most Hollywood movies about racing. Because what is represented here is not people who are pursuing a professional career. That is not really the theme. To be successful in one's career is not really a theme or a primary theme. It is something that happens. You can see what the participation to this race does to the career of Steve McQueen's character, but it's not what makes the character's core and his view of life. It is not even about winning, and in fact, the main character, Michael Delaney, Steve McQueen, does not win the race. He ends in second place. And this is emphasized visually by the film because the end of the film is the arrival uh, of, of the three top cars, the winner, Steve McQueen, and Eric Stoller, who is the antagonist, one of the Ferrari drivers, and the, the uh, only one who could compete with Michael for the victory in the end, neither of them win. And after that, the crowds uh, invade the street to celebrate, uh, of the racetrack, to celebrate the winning cars and their crews. Uh, there are, of course, uh, awards that are given to uh, the drivers. And, and Michael, being the second place car driver, is completely neglected, forgotten, and lost in this uh, uh, great number of people. It is, at least in part, about competing, right? But only insofar that competition is linked to the idea that the pursuit of people such as Michael is being the fastest on the track. So speed is really the core theme of the film in reference to the development of the narrative arc of the drivers. So the story is about being able to be fast, being able to be the fastest, not the winner overall, 
because the winner is not, clearly is not the fastest driver, meaning the best driver, the one who is able to drive the fastest and could not have won the race without Michael's help. The winner wins the race simply because Michael holds Eric Staller's Ferrari back, prevents Eric Staller from threatening the lead car, and by doing so, Michael's car as well has to slow down, and Michael has to give up on winning the race. So the idea is that the life of a race car driver represented in the film is all about existing in this dimension, inside the car, moving at the highest possible speed. And this is the fulfillment of the character's life, of the life of Michael. In fact, if you want to think of a way to represent the interaction between humans and machines in different parts of the material of this class, when you take the early 1900s, the idea is that you have a human and you have a machine and through the interaction between one and the other, you have an expansion of the human dimension. So humans acquire something more they didn't have before through the machine because they act in symbiosis with the machine, the same way that, to give the most trivial example, you don't look at the car when you steer the car, when you drive around. You just feel the car, you move with the car, the same that you would do with a bicycle. So the initial view of technology is that the future involves an anthropological shift or revolution whereby the existence or the predominant presence of technologies in the life of modern humans make, makes them different and more than they would be without that. So machines are humanized through this connection with a human operator. Humans suffer a transformation from completely human to a hybrid of human plus machine. When you look at the representation of the interaction with machines in a film such as Traffic, then you have to let's represent it more correctly, then you have humans and machines not sharing much of their nature, and the theme, if in here the theme was expansion of the dimension of human lives, here, the theme is alienation. That is, that is to say, instead of a, an interaction where machines acquire something, humans acquire something, right? They both gain from their connection. In this case, it's human nature that is machinized, that humans turn into a appendixes of the machines, right? And you have this constant representation of individuals devoid of any life inside their cars, almost like fish in a, in, in a tank, right? They don't connect with others, they don't connect with nature anymore, and the use of the machines makes them less human. In the case of Le Mans, the best representation of the idea of the interaction with the machines, in the case of the drivers, right? Because the film is not about the use of machines and technologies by the general population, is that humans and machines are two halves of the same kind of existence. That is to say that Michael's life is not complete. He feels less than human unless he is in contact with the car. Only inside the car, when he's driving in a fast car, he finds the fulfillment that he fails to find 
in regular life. So, in some ways, you could say it's a continuation of the theme of alienation. Life is nothing. Life is boring to Michael unless he can be racing. And when he's racing, he becomes one with the machine, but the machine completes him. It doesn't expand him. It allows him to find his own humanity, find a way to see something beyond the triviality, the burden of human existence, right? So in this regard, the idea of driving at a fast speed becomes almost a mystical experience, a place where you can find complete focus. You can be in the zone. And that's the idea, even now, for uh, drivers to be completely in the zone, to put away any concern. And that's the issue also for Michael. The fact that because of the accident, the traumatic memories of the accident in the previous year in which Lisa's husband died, Piero Belghetti, because of the issues, the tension that he experiences with Lisa herself, because he could explore the possibility of a relationship with Lisa. However, it will be clear from a scene towards the end of the film that Lisa would not entertain, Lisa herself, who evidently feels attracted to Michael, could not bear another loss. Therefore, she could not establish a relationship with a man who continues on this very dangerous career that exposes him to the possibility of death at every race, okay? So he has to fight against those memories, against the current concerns regarding the possibility of this relationship to find complete focus, get completely immersed in the experience of driving. And when he does that, then that is his own personal victory. It doesn't matter that he doesn't get first place in the race because he has found the space, the mental space, the dimension that he thinks is the only way of living for someone like him. Because I should say that, as you will see uh, uh, today, at the end of the night, uh, there will be a horrific accident, and this doesn't involve directly Michael. However, Michael drives by the scene of the accident, and seeing the accident triggers the traumatic memories of the previous year, so he loses concentration, and he crashes with his car, uh, his heart, but only lightly, but completely destroys the car, and therefore he is off the race. After that, he goes back to his RV, has a conversation of Lisa, where in a very indirect, oblique way, they explore the romantic tension between them. And he makes it clear she understands that racing is everything for him. She makes him understand that she couldn't be in that same situation with a man who could die the, during the next weekend, during the race of the next weekend. And then, to break this tension, the manager of the Porsche team comes in and says, Michael, I want you to take another car and ensure that we win the race. Not you win the race, but the team has to win the race. And Michael feels a sense of justice, a sense of fairness. Out of justice and fairness towards his team will sacrifice his desire to win ensure that another driver wins by blocking the only other fa the only fast competitor that is remained in the race eric staller with the ferrari and that will be his path to recovery his personal victory i uh, uh, included expanded the notes that i had posted here uh, to include uh, what i just told you so let me just double check and then we can proceed. Keep in mind that the visual and, and, and the thematic 
uh, uh, key to the understanding of the film is that the film is all about understatement. Usually, race car racing films are over dramatizing racing itself, and the Fast and the Furious would also be good examples of that. The, in here, you have the opposite, right? No excessive drama, no narrative emphasis added through the script and the lines in the script. Just the cars going around the track is enough to capture the, ma the magic of racing. And keep in mind that this is a period, 1971, where a lot of people still don't have a TV set in their homes, especially in Europe. What is this? this noise from? You have an idea? Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not some kind of alarm, right? Okay. And um, I was saying that the, the key is understatement and Steve McQueen himself, through his acting, through his cho choices of scripts, through uh, um, in the films where he was the producer, and therefore he had an input on how the main character played by him uh, should be presented on the screen. This includes Bullet, where uh, he was the producer. He thought that in order to be seen as a cool guy, he had to uh, uh, use understatement, right? To him, the idea of cool guy is not someone who brags. It's not someone who gains the official public recognition of others. The, the coolest guy, the coolest hero, is the hero who is so good he can ignore the others, even the mistreatment of others, because in the end, his skills, his talents are such that no one can ignore them. Even when they neglect to reward the character, everyone understands that he is the coolest guy in the room, the coolest guy in that place. That was his idea, which was one way psychologically to compensate for his own problems, troubles, personal issues, right? We said he suffered from depression, uh, he, he was not really that good at socializing with others. Um, and therefore, this was what he dreamed of being, what he couldn't be in real life. I think a good comparison to understand the character of Michael Delany would be to see the characteristics of the character of Ken Miles in the recent film Ford v Ferrari, Ken Miles being inspired by a real-life character of someone who was an engineer, very good at setting up the cars and developing the cars, and also a driver, and someone who raced in the 24 hour of Le Mans more than once. In the film Ken Miles, who also ends up being second, not winning the race, even though clearly he was the fastest there. Uh, Ken Miles in the film talks about the perfect lap, meaning what is the highest achievement for a driver to be able to drive around Le Mans, an eight mile long racetrack, in a way that is perfect, taking every turn, every straight at the highest possible speed for the car he is driving. So you see, it becomes a mystical experience. It's not about social recognition, about the career, about the victory, uh, etc. And if anything, it's the internal battles, right? Being the winner, overcoming the personal limitations, the limitations induced by the previous experiences of the driver. So we go back to almost where we were, that is to say, right before the start of the race. And what's significant here is how you go from the noises of the racetrack to the announcer identifying the various cars and their drivers for the spectators to then 
complete silence, in that complete silence, there will be two kinds of noise that will be heard. The first one will be the heartbeat of the race car drivers in their cars waiting for the flag to give the start, and then the beats of the engines. And, and of course, these two noises become one to signify the symbiosis between the driver and the car. The, the two sounds merge together, the heartbeats and the mechanical beats of the engine. After that, for the next 15 or 20 minutes, you just have cars going around. Almost like a documentary. However, the effort by the editors and the director of, of the film is to tell the story through the cars, tell the story of the race, which is a story in the story. It's not just the story of these individuals. It's not just the narrative arc of the individuals, but the story of this phenomenon of car racing. And then, after the first 15 or 20 minutes, there will be a few short interactions between, again, Lisa and Michael, showing the tension between themselves, the distance, because there is guilt on both sides, right? Michael feels guilty because he was involved in the accident where her husband died. She feels guilty because she would like to approach him, but at the same time, she knows she shouldn't because he's responsible or partly responsible for that accident. And we will continue for longer through the representation of the race in the night and up until the moment that um, Michael crashes his car at the, during the, mor the early morning of the next day.